Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I'm going to compare the various sources of gold generation in Age of Empires 2. I'll be looking at gold mining, relics, the Faderia, trade carts, trade cogs, and selling wood and food at the market to find out roughly how much gold per minute you can expect from each of those sources. Let's check it out. To start with, the most basic source of gold is just mining it. Now it depends a bit on how many villagers you have crowded around, or how far away the mining camp is. But for generic civilizations in Dark Age, it's around 21 gold per minute. After getting the gold mining tech and wheelbarrow, that jumps to 25 gold per minute. And with gold shaft mining and handcart, it's more like 29 gold per minute. Of course, Turks get between 18 and 20% more thanks to a sieve bonus, and the Indians get 9 to 10% more after their tech sultans. The extra carry capacity of Aztecs and the Berbers' faster walking villagers aren't a big factor here if you're using a mining camp one tile away. The next source of gold is from relics. They generate a steady 1 gold for every 2 seconds, or 30 gold per minute, or basically the equivalent of a fully upgraded post-imperial age villager mining away inside of the monastery forever. For Aztecs and their allies, that's 40 gold per minute instead. Now most maps only have 5 relics though, so ideally they're an augment and not your entire gold income. Another similar source of gold is the Portuguese Faderia. I've discussed the Faderia in depth before, so I won't repeat all of that here. Suffice to say, it's an infinite but not population efficient way to get gold. It's been tweaked a few times in the past, but currently sits at generating 27 gold per minute, among some other resources. Now relics and faderias are generally most important in free-for-alls and 1v1s, where trade isn't an option. But everyone knows trade is the best source of infinite gold. Well, let's see how it compares. This one's a little more complicated, so bear with me. First of all, we need the formula for how much gold is generated per trip, given the distance between two markets. This formula is one that I grabbed off the AOE2 wiki. I'm not sure who found it or how they got it, but it's similar to mine that I found before in one of my oldest videos. The difference is it takes map size into account, which at that point I hadn't realized was a factor. That means theirs works for small map sizes a lot better than mine, so I'll be using the wikis with a slight modification. It was also pointed out to me by a viewer that trade routes of a certain percentage of the map in length may generate different amounts of gold per trip depending on the map size, but actually give the same gold per minute. A trade route spanning 100 tiles on a tiny map, for example, runs about 83% of its side length, and generates the same gold over time as a 200 tile route on a giant map. Crunching the numbers and assuming you have caravan researched, which you always should, here are the rates in gold per minute you can expect from trade carts on routes of various lengths. Of course, for Spanish allies, these should all be 25% higher. Essentially, for every 10% of the map length you increase the route, all of your trade carts generate about 2.1 more gold per minute. To see the big picture, on the y-axis I have the gold generated per minute, and the distance between trading markets is on the x-axis. The red line here is a trade cart with caravan. As I said before, the Dark Age villager started around 20 to 21 gold per minute, jumps to 24 to 25 after the first gold mining upgrade, and then the post-imperial villager is at around 29, with relics at 30. I'll put those two together because they're pretty comparable. As you can see, trade isn't necessarily better than mining gold if your markets are too close together. In fact, at about 75% of the length of the side of the map, which you might think is a pretty solid trade route, the carts are at best with no obstruction, performing about as well as a Dark Age villager. It's not until you start to angle the trade routes to be further than the side length of the map that you start to get above 30 gold per minute. The big takeaway is that trade isn't necessarily generating gold at a higher rate than mining. The real advantage is that you can continue to do it well after the mines on the map have run out. But so far this obviously ignores bumping and obstacles like buildings or trees. It's a tough thing to quantify, but I just want to know what an average looking trade route on an average size map loses in inefficiency. To find out, I took a few samples from a recorded game with what seemed like a busy trade route with quite a few obstacles going the full length of a medium map. 
Sampling a few of the trade cards, I got an average time of 421 for a round trip. That's an average of 20.9 gold per minute, or about 80% of the theoretical rate for a route of that distance. I wouldn't say there's a hard and fast rule to this, but based on that, it seems reasonable to me that most trade routes would be operating at 10 to 20% below the theoretical values. So now that we've seen trade carts, how does that compare with trade cogs? First, a couple of things to know are that dry dock does nothing to your gold rate. It does speed up trade cogs, but the gold per trip is reduced proportionally, so it can be ignored. Second, since the release of African Kingdoms, markets and docks of the same distance generate the same gold per trip. So the trade cog's inherent speed advantage corresponds directly to a gold rate advantage as well, at least on paper. In practice, it's often harder to get a straight line established, or even if you do, they're particularly sensitive to bumping. In this test, there are 100 trade carts and 100 trade cogs with a pretty clear route along a giant map. Even just subjectively looking at them, you can see the trade cogs are getting in each other's way a lot more often, and the numbers reflect that. The trade carts over 10 minutes averaged around 23 gold per minute, which is about 12% below the theoretical value. The trade cogs, on the other hand, over 10 minutes, averaged just under 20 gold per minute each. That's 43% less than what they should be doing on paper, and in this case is actually slightly less than the trade carts. Now this is a pretty extreme case where 100 trade cogs are trying to do the exact same route, so I'm not suggesting that's typical of how they'll perform in-game, but it's pretty clear they're more affected by congestion than trade carts in this comparison. They also automatically trade between the closest docks regardless of where they start from, which on a water map means you have to pile your docks in the corners if you want a good route. Considering docks have the dual function of also producing military units, that's not necessarily ideal. Personally, I wouldn't say that trade cogs are strictly worse or better than trade carts. It's easy to come up with a test that can show either. But if I had to pick one, I think trade carts are the better default. That being said, in small numbers on a long route between two islands, trade cogs can be the best gold generators in the game, especially with a Spanish ally. But finally, what if you don't have access to trade, but still want to get some gold out of the market? How well does selling food and wood work as a way of actually generating gold? If you're selling at the market as your primary source of gold, it's safe to assume you'll bottom out the market pretty quickly, either at 14 or 17 gold per 100 wood, depending on if you have guilds or not. In general, if you're selling wood, that means you'll be looking at between 4.5 and 6 gold per minute per lumberjack. Jumping back to the graph, that puts this method at around here. Selling food is even slightly worse, and more like 4 gold per minute. These are also probably slight overestimates, given you'll have to rebuild lumber camps, but with enough villagers it does add up to a few hundred gold per minute. The point is, it's not preferable to trade, but is a way to squeeze a bit of gold out of the market in a pinch. So that covers the major gold sources up to the rise of the Rajah's expansion. Hopefully that helped put them all in a bit more perspective. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.